all the old stuff, all the extraneous wires from this period. These caps are totally shot. Mmm, tasty. All this yuck on the board. Let's see what we can do about that. Well, this was interesting. Between the leakage from the caps and some kind of old mold or other growth, both boards were just covered in yuck. And um, while they're still not beautiful, I had to get in. There was some uh, Formula 409 and uh, uh, work that in there with some 800 grit wet dry sanding paper to get all the stuff off the board and then I soaked the boards in isopropyl alcohol um, so while it's not beautiful this gray is just places where the uh, the black is worn away and there's no more growth on here so I can rebuild and you can see I've put in the new jumper wires I'm not doing this to the 72 spec I'm doing this as if we're uh, pre CBS 64 65 amp um, in terms of the values here on the droppers and the way the ground is done and uh, running good jumpers beneath the board as opposed to the stuff just tack soldered from the top like they started doing to save time and money. Anyway, time to put on the rest of the stuff. Okay, that's much better. Time to move on to the bias area. Okay, like I mentioned before, a whole lot of nonsense here with this 200 microfarad cap. It was broken at the ground connection anyway, so it was unsafe to use. So I'm going to get all that out, redo it properly. I'm going to change to the 64-65 bias circuit, straight from the AB763 schematic. And uh, you know what I'm going to be doing with all these chassis grounds and such. But it's a lot of ticky-tacky little stuff I'll show you after it's done. Okay, the bias board has been rebuilt and a lot of the wiring around here has been shortened and neatened. Ground's done directly to chassis. Uh, that bad solder joint there is reflowed. Ready uh, for a AC safety ground later. These caps nuts are tight on the power transformer. Shorten the heater wires a lot. I'm about to get some bias, some, sorry, some heater balance resistors into here. I'll deal with the bias pot later. I'm doing a master volume, a post phase inverter master volume on this amp, so that'll be part of that. Next up is to go section by section in here and uh, convert to AB763. And uh, some places I may do a hybrid, like it's got the 330K grid leaks in the phase inverter. Those can be good, but if you have this 10 nanofarad cap coming into that, it gets way too bassy and woofy. So if you have the 330Ks, this needs to be a 3.3 nanofarad, in my experience. Or if I go to the 1 megs, this can go down to the original 1 nanofarad uh, from the AB763. Um, just little things like that. All the cathode bias caps, and I'll be dealing with cleaning up the board as I go. So, more in a bit. Okay, I got stuff out, and there's just all this funk on here. There's there's the grayed out board that I showed in the previous video, and there's just this, these layers of stuff. And as I pull the bottom board, just see you can see this. I've never run into this before. Um, it's a trend, you know. Normally, I would think this amp had been in a flood, like a flooded basement. But the transformers don't seem to have any water damage. But uh, maybe it was just a liquid spill of some severity inside the chassis. So, um, at this point, um, I'm concerned that the best course of action might be to replace the entire board and pretty much all the components on it. But, um, um, that's the uh, most expensive route to go on this. I think I'm pretty much duty-bound to see if I can clean um, the existing thing and get it um, healthy, even if it's not lovely. Uh, it costs a lot less to clean a little bit than to redo everything from scratch, especially with all the CBS spaghetti wiring 
it's really a pain in the butt to do so ah more cleaning time how i love the cleaning well some good news for, for the owner this has turned out just to be a whole bunch of dirt essentially and it was definitely spread by a liquid so i think maybe there's a liquid spill at the same time there's a lot of dust in the air or maybe there was a lot of really humid days during a dust storm or something i don't know but um important thing is that this stuff in here will also clean up just fine let me, let me demonstrate that on camera and uh, this is just 409 formula 409 just a little bit there and i'll work that around just a hair do a more thorough job when I'm not filming because it's hard to do this left-handed. And all that yuck comes off the board pretty pretty easily. And the areas that I tried to do with just alcohol before will also clean up pretty well with a 409. And once all the that is off the board from the 409, then I will use alcohol to get any residue from the 409 off the board. So different solvents for different things. One solvent to remove dirt, other solvent to remove the previous solvent. Still going to be a lot uh, better than replacing everything. It won't be the world's prettiest app even with all this stuff removed, but it'll be worlds better than it is now. Everything cleaned up pretty well on the board after all that combination of uh, Formula 409 followed by uh, isopropyl alcohol and a couple of stubborn spots. Don't tell anyone, but saliva is a really good solvent. And after that, don't worry, a little bit wipe with alcohol to get any spit off there just because it gives people the oogie boogies. Uh, new one watt plates. Um, carbon uh, films in this one um, on a 72 I don't feel the need to be historic so much as reliable while still sounding good so those one watt carbon films are a good choice um, on these silver panel amps sometimes the eyelets can get really crowded because they have a lot of stuff jammed into the ground ones so I didn't try to squeeze the cathode bypass caps in there and here and here uh, plus the, the, the wire has a, has a uh, thicker uh, center conductor on these. So as you can see, I did a partial wrap with the new capacitor leads around the old resistors. And that's solid, and it's reliable, and it's easy to undo down the road should, uh, next time the sample needs to be recapped. Um, but I'd rather have this and know that every solder joint is good than try to cram everything into some of these already crowded eyelets. Maybe a little bit hard to see, but I've taken about a foot and a half of the spaghetti out and eaten things up. Um, uh, new caps here in the LFO. Uh, slowed it down a little bit uh, per the owner's request. Um, I've done a partial AB763 phase inverter. Uh, retained the 330Ks with that 3.3 nanofarad input cap, like I mentioned. All the other values here are um, what you find in a AB763, and the bias is now AB763, with these twisted wires being the grids going to a master volume, which is now where the ground switch used to be. It's a post-phase inverter. Uh, works very well. And while there's some noisy stuff in that area, I've got the grid wires twisted together to and from the pot, taking advantage of common mode cancellation. So that should be nice. Uh, I've done this before, always works well. Uh, new three watt screen grid resistors there. New power cable wire decode. Um, I'm about to put the uh, owner's tubes in it, power it up and see how uh, his tube sound. Actually, I've got to do one more thing first. I've got to put in those heater balance resistors I, for, I forgot to do earlier. Then I'll put in the tubes. And then once I'm sure that um, the amp is biased correctly and um, that we don't have any stray voltage in the board, 
I'm going to clean all the, I'm sure I'll have to clean all the pots, given how dirty this board was. Um, starting after 69, seems to be kind of random luck what taper pots you get. Um, these all say audio taper in the tone stack. On the earlier amps, the treble and volumes were 30% rather than 10%. And uh, sometimes these things sound better with the 30% J taper pot. We'll look at that once I hear how everything's sounding. Um, you know, I got a lot of I got a, a lot of stuff off this board, not just the dirt, but all the flux and old solder and clean capacitors and stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to make this thing sound as good as possible without gutting it and rebuilding it completely to uh, pre CBS stuff. You can see a little bit of the cloth wire here, a la the pre-CBS stuff, but other than that, just shortened and neatened up the lead dress on the old spaghetti. Well, goodness gracious, I opened up the box of tubes that the owner sent, and they're all Mondo packed like this. Apparently this is V2. Um, this is not only overkill in terms of keeping the tube safe, it adds a lot to the time I have to bill because it's going to take 20 30 minutes to get these damn things out. Maybe not that long, but it's pretty ridiculous. All right. And V2. All right, it's an old RCA 7025. It's worth packing well, but I think this is overkill. When it comes time for me to ship this amp, maybe I'll show a saner approach. No offense to the, to the owner, but this is a little over the top. All right, well, I've got the tubes in, and I powered it on safely, and I got it biased. Uh, the output tubes that came with were one RCA short bottle, which I suspect is original, and then a long bottle 6L6 uh, with an off-brand label. I don't know if it's a Sylvania or GE or RCA or whatever. Um, and it's got a 5U4 GB. The uh, long 6L6 is uh, uh, got a slight gl blue glow that the owner was concerned about. The blue glow is nothing to be concerned about. Um, the reason I'm probably going to suggest a new pair of tubes on this uh, on the output is that they're drawing about 10 million, uh, 10 percent different uh, idle. So um, the, uh, the long bottle tube is drawing more than the short bottle. And um, V6, the phase inverter, AT7 was a little microphonic. I swapped it in V3. Uh, V4, the mixer is a little bit microphonic, maybe fine. Uh, V2 seems okay. I'll know more once I play through it. Uh, it did not come with a V1. The owner's not using V1. I put one of my tubes in V1 just to test a normal channel. So I've not heard this yet. I'm going to see what it sounds like. I'm just going to turn the volume. So we got some crackle. Not too bad. That'll clean up. Let's see how it sounds before we worry about cleaning it up. And here's the bright switch. No pop. Good. <laughs> So far, so good on that. And yeah, I've got to have the treble up at like eight to get it pretty balanced. If I turn it both pots down to uh, five and a half, it's pretty dark. That's that 10% taper on the treble pot. Not the end of the world. Turn it up a little bit, maybe six and a half. Change, get around to seven. Anyway, so far, so good. 
Uh, I'll clean that volume pipe a little bit. Let's see how the vibrato channel is doing. That's the one he uses. No signal. Let's see. Try the low gain jack sometimes. Not very often, but sometimes you'll have a situation where one jack works, the other one doesn't. Ah, you've got volume with the low gain jack. Gain jack one more time. Sometimes just the physical act of plugging things in. Yeah, that just needs to have all its contacts cleaned. So that's good. So no crackle on those pots. Same situation with the uh, taper on that treble pot. I mean, it's not a deal breaker. It's not necessarily worth changing that pot for the right for the uh, pre-CBS taper. But what happens is, uh, it, you know, the, if the sweet spot moves from noon to two thirty, three o'clock, then you have a, a lower range of fine tuning the treble before it gets too bright. the uh, tremolo is working. Vibrato. Sorry, Leo. Nothing whatsoever. So let's see if it's just a, a bad tube here in V5. Uh, Don't want to start diving in and changing things if it's just a weak tube. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of weakness. A tube that can pass audio when you used in say V1 in one of these may not be strong enough to uh, sustain the, the uh, oscillator in V5. So I'm putting in a groove tube so I've got it handy. Let that warm up a little bit and see if the uh, tremolo starts trembling. Well, nothing there. So, all right, I've got my immediate checklist to see why the tremolo isn't trimming, and it may be that old roach. Um, and I've got to clean up the jacks and that volume pot on the normal channel. Real quick, let me make sure that the leads inside the roach aren't touching each other. Sometimes that happens, and then you don't get anything. Inside the roach, on this side, there's a neon bulb. And on that side, there's an LDR, a light dependent resistor. And I'm not getting the flash. I should have the wonderful flash. Okay, well, I was measuring voltages, and I could measure that the oscillator was oscillating. We just weren't getting any flashing at that bulb. And when I went to uh, look at that old L uh, bulb in the roach, one of the leads, which is broken off, just floating around, not doing anything. So I popped in a new roach. And as you can tell by the flashing, it is doing its thing. So you can also hear that it goes slower than normal. Still goes 
pretty fast. So the tremolo is tremoloing, and the slower speed is nice. Here's the master volume. You won't hear that great in this. You'll hear it in the real playing video. It is working and it's as transparent as it can be. Um, that said, the compression in the mic uh, on the camera offset set. So let me pause this and hook up a, a test reverb tank, and let's see how the reverb sounding. I forgot to mention, by the way, that now that the tremolo is tremoloing, there's a slight ticking. Uh, it's very common. It's easily fixed. I'll just put a little 22 or, or 10 nanofarad cap across the uh, LDR from the uh, on the left side to ground. That's fairly standard. But I know that the tremolo is working well, and that tick will go away. So let's see how the reverb sounds. <laughs> Yeah, that AT7 is a little microphonic. That's the one that was in the phase inverter. I swapped them around. Better to have a slightly microphonic reverb uh, driver than the, the phase inverter. There's a distortion there I'm not liking. might be that uh, B3 that's microphonic might also be distorting. So let's swap that for a different AT7 and see where we end up. And pause this while I find one. All right, turns out it was not the tube, but it is still slightly microphonic. It was a very dirty RCA jack. things go, I would say that tremolo is working. channel for playing that. Sorry, sometimes you got to, right? So I think this amp is sounding every bit as good as many of the uh, pre-CBS ones I've restored and worked on. And um, I'll put my money where my mouth is because tomorrow I am snowbound and I plan on doing a comparison of this 72 to a restored 66. Both of them uh, through the same cab with the same mic, and I've got a looper pedal. I'll be using the same performance, so it'll be as much apples to apples as possible. Though this amp still does need a new pair of output tubes. But other than that, it's getting there.